I'd like to introduce Jim Malika. He's Under Armour Senior Vice President of Global Consumer Engagement and a 20-year plus veteran in global media and digital marketing. At Under Armour, Jim leads the brand digital experience with the consumer and its focus on the world's largest digital health and fitness community. This morning, Jim is, will highlight Under Armour's connected fitness platform, its new cutting edge, smart footwear, and the consumer journey to achieve personal greatness. Please join me in welcoming Jim Malika. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I feel like a relief pitcher coming in there to save the voice. That was a tough one. Um, thanks for having me. Excited to be here again. See, even in this big room, I see some uh, familiar faces here. Um, interesting. If we were to uh, if we were to gamify Vegas right now, I think you guys would win the badge either for Prudence or Warriors being the first morning after the first night in Vegas, and everybody's here at 8:30. So, congratulations to everybody. Um, let me start off with this slide. Uh, as you said, um, I work for Under Armour. Um, Under Armour is really focused on innovation. It's one of the core pillars of what we do. We believe that adding value back into the consumer at every possible step is the most important point um, that, that we can drive value home. And that's the way we differentiate ourselves from other people. So before we get into talking more about where we as an organization think the world is moving with regards to fitness and technology, um, I think you have to have a little bit of context about Under Armour as a company. Um, this is the very first t-shirt product that was ever created by our founder, Kevin Plank, founder and CEO. Um, I don't know how many of you know the story, but Kevin was a football player. He played at the University of Maryland. He was not the biggest, don't tell him I told you this, he was not the biggest or fastest. So he needed every competitive edge that he could get. And when he put on this, this cotton t-shirt, or when he was a boy, even worse, when it was cold outside, a flannel shirt, um, it would absorb all of this moisture, all of his sweat, and it would add a tremendous amount of weight to uh, his body, slowing him down even further. So he said, there has to be a better way. And he came up with a new material that would wick sweat from his body. And because of that, it helped him perform better on the field. He was lighter, it dried faster, so he wasn't uncomfortable or wouldn't get you know, skin burns from, from the equipment. Um, and that's what Under Armour was founded on. There has to be a better way, and that was the foundation for innovation for everything that we would do for the next 21, 22 years. So, our mission, pretty simple. We make products, experiences that make you better. Be it a world-class athlete or those gym warriors like so many of you guys are today. And with that foundation, sort of forms the way that we look at, the way that we look at the world, the way that we look at athletes. So um, when we were moving the goalposts out on innovation to try to differentiate ourselves from the other products that are out there in the world, you know, so we could perform and help you perform better and better and better, we were looking for a rallying cry, something to motivate everybody, focus everybody internally, and help the world understand why we introduce so many products um, that have innovation into it, right? It doesn't, it's not the, um, if you're looking for success rate on every single product that you make, um, this is not the path to take, but if you're looking to create transformational change in industries, it's a must, like a lot of you guys know in the companies that you work for. So for us, uh, we created um, we created a rallying cry, and I believe it's this next video, if I'm not mistaken. I'd like you all to see it about where we believe the vision is going in the future for Under Armour and you as an athlete. Our job is to make you better.
to make all athletes better. To inspire you, to empower you, and to connect you to the world's greatest design and innovation. All you must provide is the will to make it happen. So with that as a backdrop, you can see that we're about creating these seamless experiences. And notice in the video that everything that that female athlete is engaged in are things that she would normally do in her everyday workout. And this is gonna to get to some of the things that we think are really important when we're developing products for the future. Um, first of all, we think they need to be less cumbersome, right? Whether it be a heart rate monitor or these other discrete, very narrow solutions that are forcing consumers to change their behaviors or adopting uh, a new um, product to wear, that's a big hurdle, right? Consumers don't, you guys don't, I don't like to have to have something that has a very narrow solution and it's a discrete product that I then need to change my behaviors. Why can't that sensor, why can't those things be built into the stuff I already need and already use? And so this, you know, not, not carrying additional elements into the gym, not having to worry about additional elements that you're plugging into your phone, is really, really important to make it a seamless experience for adoption and for broader use. It needs to be more efficient, right? The more we have proven in some of our own research that the more you have to take something off and charge it, the more that it's different, it's outside of an ecosystem, the greater probability it is that you will not use it in the future. Every time there's a step, there's a hurdle, there's a chance you won't put that back on. I think some of you guys have seen this, you know, when, call it you know, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, when we were talking about um, step trackers, wearables. Right? How many people at some point you charged it and within a few months you never picked it up again? Right? Um, it has to be more specific, right? There's all this aggregated data out there, but if it doesn't have proper context for you, it's not helpful, and it's not just for you, right? Because you're not, I'm not um, an aggregate number that's tucked into a broader portfolio of people out in the world that are aged 35 to 45. Um, it's about me and my body's very, very different. Same with the passions that, that I pursue. You know, a runner wants data that's specific to running that's gonna help them get better. Not aggregated gym data and workout. And last, it has to be more socially integrated. Not just hooks back into the big social platforms which are super helpful, but you have to have a community around you. We have proven data that shows that if you are connected to a community, you have encouragement, you feel a sense of obligation and responsibility, there is social recognition in that, there are rewards, there are competitions involved in this. All of that leads to greater and greater success, whether it's losing a few pounds, getting in better shape, or you know, trimming your marathon time. And you see that with things like Peloton or with MyFitnessPal, which is our own community. So we talked about community for a minute. Um, super, super important. I think in individuals, people in general, have no shortage of trying to better themselves, right? Everybody has a desire to better themselves. That's why we go to school. You know, that's why we, we read the paper or try to become informed, whether it's being a better parent, being a better employee, eating better. Everybody has that desire, however, the desire for who you are now to getting to a better self, that chasm is really, really big. And community helps provide that bridge. So doing things like having challenges built into the community, having 
a blog where people can ask questions, see people's success stories, other people like them, not just superheroes and athletes that are doing these amazing things, but people that have struggled and battled through and won, right? They're living a healthier, better life. They've shaved a few minutes off of their mile time. Um, they're eating better. They're battling a disease and they're, 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 they have it under control. It's critically important. Right? And different elements at different times will help motivate people. The encouragement when you start in the recognition of that, of anything that you achieve through badging, et cetera, is really important to keep that going. Once you are in a rhythm, competition, challenges, commitment become incredibly important. So it's not just this, this start-stop binary thing, it's a journey and it has valleys and peaks and it's really, really important to build a strong sense of community. And we have invested an incredible amount into our communities and we'll talk about the value that that adds back into consumers. We talked for a second ago about badging um, and the community. Uh, hit one too many. We have people within our community, we have challenges that we set up and we set up you versus the year this year, where people can run 2018 kilometers in 2018. Slide mistake by my part, but it's a great commitment saying I'm in at the beginning of the year. And this unlocks badges and rewards and experiences to our UA run camps, where these great experiences we drop runners off into places like Death Valley or the mountains in Colorado to go on these incredible outdoor excursions and these great runs. This type of recognition, these type of rewards, the things that we're doing to add value and keep people engaged, provides a tremendous amount of emotional connectivity that's very, very difficult to achieve for a brand through straight advertising or even content marketing. These are tools and experiences that make people better. So it's not just about our products, and we're gonna get into that in a second being connected, but it's a seamless experience between physical and digital and those communities helping to elevate people. Coaching, another critical component. Um, some of the best athletes in the world have access to amazing trainers and amazing data. We took it upon ourselves to do deep, deep ethnographies, work very, very closely with some of the best athletes in the world, study data that's coming out of our community that is unbelievable and amazing, to then take this information and these insights and provide them back to everyday people to help them run a little bit further, help prevent injuries, help be a better runner just in the day to day to stick with their routine because the fatigue, for those of you that run, the fatigue that sets in, you know, the mental hurdles that come in, this coaching is incredibly helpful and you'll see that through some of these things that we pulled, the data that we pulled out of these communities, we have found that 80% of the people that are running in our community, their stride length's too long. It's interesting, I would have thought it would have been too short. But people are overstriding. Overstriding means that your cadence or the amount of time your feet hit the ground is less. You will increase your speed, you will lessen the amount of fee, uh, fatigue and shock on your body if you shorten your stride cadence. The tools within the community help you understand that. Now, as we're gonna get into it as we start to connect products with this, the product is going to talk to the experience in the community, which will then tell you the data that will make you a smarter, better, uh, less injury prone runner. And this is sort of the democratization of data for any type of runner. So we talked a little bit about our communities. Show of hands here. How many people have used MyFitnessPal? Yeah, that's pretty good. This community is unbelievable. Um, the success rate that MyFitnessPal has, the amount of people in this community is unbelievable. You combine that with Map My Run, Map My Fitness. Our community has 225 million unique users. Now you remember I talked about that journey. People start and they quit all the time. It's the nature of working out. It's the nature of trying to live a healthy lifestyle. It's not this linear, slope where we keep going up and getting better and better and better. We have people coming in, dropping out, and coming in. Right now, 
Great time for this community. It's massive. Everybody's made their New Year's resolution. It's our Super Bowl, right? We're helping people. The stories that are coming out of this community are amazing. Living healthier life. Mid-February, different story. That's when the re-engagement kicks in. But when you look at this and you think to yourself, this type of community, think about it. Classes in your local gym, right? These boutique fitness places. Community pulls people in, helps push you a little bit further, helps you stay engaged and get on that path or stay on that path for a healthier you. So we have an incredible amount of people in there that are, are providing a tremendous amount of data that then gets put back into the experiences we create, the things we track, the way we develop products, all go into this and it's incredibly powerful and unique to us. So I talked a little bit about some of the data and I'm gonna talk about that now. This stuff's crazy. All right, um, 372 billion calories burned in these communities. 500 million log, uh, workouts logged. Two, that 20 million pounds lost, 20 million pounds. Like this, this is a fantastic stat to say that people care. And you see that with this massive amount of interest in health and fitness, especially from the younger generation, this is only gonna continue to grow. But it's not just these massive stats that we have. There's also some great insights that we pulled out. May is the most active month. It's interesting. February is the, February's a really low month. November's a really low month as well. It starts getting cold, holidays. People don't want to think about working out. People don't want to think about or log what they're eating. Right? Um, weather's getting warm in May. People are doing more outside. Uh, we have things like the average amount of miles run for a runner across all of these communities, 3.1. The, this is interesting when we talk about product development, something that I didn't know until we had our data scientists digging through there. The inseam or the length of a short, how short your shorts are is directly proportional to how fast of a runner you are. So if you're out in the street or stopping at Starbucks and you see somebody with really, really short shorts, Back off, give them proper respect, they're fast. Right? So those stats are all great, it's fantastic. But what's really, really um, amazing to me is when you see the power and the impact on individuals. We do something on my fitness pal called Success Stories. And they're about people and their journeys. This is Carla, Carla has run for 1,300 consecutive days. I'm not kidding, 1,300 consecutive days. And so when you see people like this, right, and you start to see their behaviors in the community, it leads us to data that then helps us inform the products we're gonna build. So I want you to see the impact of Carla's story real quickly. As of today, I've run every single day, at least a mile a day for 1,371 days. That's a little over three years, nine months. My first goal was 100 days, turned into 200 days, turned into a year, turned into 1,000 days. And my family found out about it, thought it was pretty cool, and then friends who thought I was crazy also thought it was pretty cool. I started using Mount My Run a little before the streak. It was a motivator in keeping the streak going because it was something that I could see visually in my hand and see the miles rack up, see the time rack up, which is also really fun to do. My biggest motivation is the fact that my grandmother and my younger brother are diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. I decided that I could run in a half marathon, I could raise money, to help find a cure, to slow it down, to end it. Most of running is a mental thing. Sometimes you just don't want to do it. You're having a tough day. You get home, you take off your shoes from work, and you just want to put sweatpants on, but I put my running shoes on instead, and I get a mile in. Three miles later, I'll say maybe we'll be five tonight. If it's a one mile run, I still feel good, because it's another day. It's another day on the streak, and it's another day that I could, and so I'm not going to take it for granted. Amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. So what we found is runners like that really look and put a premium on the cushioning within their, within their shoes. Makes sense, right? 
But what we found is at least equally important is something called energy return, right? It's sort of the spring that you get back off your shoes. And the challenge is, is that you usually have to pick one or the other. Um, and for these people that run distances, long distances, repeated distance, the wear and tear on their legs and body is tremendous. So if we could figure out a way, because we found this insight, that two to four times the body weight with each step, and you're thinking about somebody that's running that, that distance, it's incredible. So could we figure out a way to help lessen the impact, provide the same kind of cushioning and feel that they wanted, um, and lessen the fatigue? So we came out with a product, uh, we're coming out with a product on February 1st, with a new technology in it, cushioning. It's called Hover. And within this technology, it allows unbelievable energy return, that spring that we're talking about, with unparalleled cushioning. And it's our third generation of connected shoe. So these shoes have a chip in it. And I could go running right now, and I could come back without my phone, without anything, completely untethered, and I could come back, and all of my data is transferred immediately back into my phone. So I have a historical log that uh, records all of this information, and I can go back in and help look at my trends, have coaching tips, what I did well, what I didn't do well, um, as I progress on my journey. Within the Hover technology, there are two silhouettes, two shoes we have. We have the Phantom, which provides you with amazing fit and feel and style for everyday use. It's kind of the luxury car, if you will. And then we have the Sonic, which is a real endurance speed shoe. Um, great, great. Uh, energy return to it and a very light upper that lets it breathe so things don't happen like you, your feet sweating over an incredible amount of distance which then leads to chafing uh, all the problems that come with that with runners that log lots of distances. So we talked about the shoe being connected. This shoe connects all types of information. It has, it will track your, your path, your distance, your speed, the cadence, It'll have your splits. All of this data is coming off this unbelievable experience that we've crafted and launching on February 1st for this shoe. Um, amazing amount of data for the average runner that they did not have access to. And this was what Under Armour provides to have uh, and give runners additional value. Previously, you'd have to buy all kinds of other things that would give you this type of information. So um, we think it's, it's revolutionary. We're really excited with each generation of this shoe. It's become more and more successful uh, and even more and more interesting with the data that comes off of it. Hover is a cushioning technology that gives you the sensation of floating over the ground. Under Armour's talking to runners every single day, and the one thing that was consistent with every runner we talked to was they feel the impact of every stride. So we wanted to take that impact away and really provide the feeling of zero gravity. We extracted a lot of very specific pain points from the runners, and one of the really big ones was breathable cushioning. Oftentimes, cushioning comes with a high compromise of low breathability, so things get hot. At Under Armour, we leverage inspiration from apparel and apparel constructions. In the case of the Hover Phantom, if you've ever put on a really nice pair of cycling shorts, that pad that you sit on is completely breathable, soft, plush. Hover Phantom is more like your luxury ride. Hover Sonic is your sport performance ride. The Sonic locks you in for when you're really trucking. Oftentimes, there's a lot of compromise around energy return and softness. Energy Web is our fabric technology that we use to wrap around the hover foam, and that keeps everything contained and brings all that energy back into your foot so that you can go forward with the most efficiency and speed. 
When you run in Hover Sonic and Hover Phantom, you also get an incredible connected experience. Our digital technology inside of the shoe syncs to map my run. New to the experience are two key features, cadence and stride length. Knowing how many steps per minute as well as how many inches between each step really determines your efficiency. So when you go out for a run in Hover Sonic or Hover Phantom, we're gonna give you that data with every single run, coaching you to become a more efficient runner. We just wrapped a deep immersion in China to understand what Chinese runners want. And what was very, very clear was how important technical benefits of the product is to their purchase decisions. And when we provided them access to Hover, their feedback was understanding that the shoe was really designed with them in mind. Hover technology is the start of our entrance into a new space of solutions and advantages for runners. This is where we turn the screws in the future. Our mission statement, Under Armour makes you better. Hover cushioning is at the forefront of that. From our design and development to our consumer research, we're bringing that to life in 2018 and it's only the beginning. So that's the shoe, so I'm over time. I just want to leave you with this. We don't think about wearables. We think about products that we enhance value in. Right? Ultimately, today's wearable is for us tomorrow's shoe, tomorrow's shirt. And we continue to strive to create products that you never knew you needed, that once you have them, you thought, how did I ever live without this? So that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you.